What's going on guys? My name is Andrew Ching and welcome to What We Drive. Right in front of you is a 2015 Maserati Ghibli. This thing when it first came out was priced at around $80,000. But now with only 32,000 miles on this car, it's been listed for sale for just about $30,000. And today, I'm going to tell you why this thing has depreciated so much. Let's look at the design of this car. The Maserati Ghibli definitely has its own beauty. In the front, it's got this signature Maserati grill, along with the Maserati emblem, makes this car look very sporty and cool, and of course, expensive. The headlight actually looks pretty cool. It's got three individual lights, an LED strip, a turn signal, and a xenon light. On the side, you do have the little Maserati logo to remind you that this car is a Maserati. The side of a Maserati Ghibli actually looks pretty good. I love how there is one, two, and three simple lines to curve the body, which I think definitely adds sportiness and beauty to this car. And of course, you get these three ventilation holes, just like the symbol of Maserati, and a red brake for sportiness. And let's not forget about the Maserati logo here, speaking of expensiveness. But even though I think on the side and on the front, this car looks fantastic and very Maserati and Italian, I don't think it's the case with the back. Just look at it. Does it look like an $80,000 car to you? I mean, the only thing that looks kind of expensive would be this Maserati logo, right? And to be honest, I personally am not a big fan of this tail light. I mean, it does not look bad, but it doesn't look that great either. As for Maserati, they could have done much better. And oh, just don't bother with the Q4 logo. This car is a base model. It's not the Q4 model, so it's just a fake decal. So overall, to my eyes, it just looks mediocre, but I think the four exhaust pipes are pretty good touch to the exterior. Let's open the back trunk. Usually on this key, you just hold down the trunk button, but now with the Maserati, you double press it, and it goes up automatically, and it better be. Inside here, you actually get a generous space for your luggages, which I think it's good for practicality. But my complaint is, when you close the trunk, the entire feeling and the sound that it makes just doesn't speak of good quality. I mean, again, just, just listen to this. Does it sound like an $800 car to you? <laughs> After all, I don't think so. Okay, the interior of a Maserati Ghibli is where the problem came. As soon as you sit into the car, you are greeted by this not so gorgeous looking interior made with cheap materials. I personally think it closely resembles that of a Jeep Cherokee from the same year. Meanwhile, here's the interior of a BMW 5 Series from the same year and the interior of a Mercedes E-Class from the same year. Both cars are in a similar price range of the Ghibli. Maserati simply didn't try hard enough. There are parts directly from Chrysler, too much plastic, and this is just not something people deserve from this price. Steering wheel and the gauge cluster look quite nice, but what's up with the blank buttons? The infotainment system is, well, bad. The glare issue is inevitable, and the irresponsive touch control can quickly bring frustration to the experience. Not to mention the backup image that hurts my soul to look at. Honestly, this little clock is perhaps the best made component of the interior. The seats look like sporty seats with good supports, however, the actual feel doesn't offer a comfortable support, and the build quality of the seats aren't up to its Japanese and German competitors. Same goes to the back seats with not much highlights and average legroom. Door trim is nice as it tries to remind you that this is a luxury Maserati, but the feel is soon disturbed by the door panel, which is plain and cheap to the touch. The key, however, feels very nice in the hand and does make you feel good with that logo. But honestly, the giveaway is still not to the expectation of a good luxury car. Underneath the hood is this metallic looking plastic engine cover, but with a Maserati logo that's made with real metal. And in here, it's a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6 that produces 345 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds with a top speed of 163 miles per hour. And oh boy, doesn't sound so good. Those numbers and data were definitely within the reasonable range for a car like this. But how does it drive? We'll find out now. 
So I drove the Maserati Ghibli and unfortunately some things happened before I started making the video and I lost pretty much all the footages related to the test drive. What you are seeing right now are the only recovered clips and I apologize for not being able to make the video like it was supposed to be made. However, I still wanted to tell you how it drives. To put it, the Ghibli is not bad in terms of driving experience, but consider it's near $30,000 price tag, it simply isn't worth it. Five main things. First of all, this car is quick, but not remarkably fast. 0 to 16, 5.5 seconds, it's not bad at all, but at its price range, there are plenty of stronger competitors such as the M5 and the C63S, which I made a video about, and it was awesome. I should definitely check it out in the description below. Second, the 8-speed automatic transmission, although it does the job, um, does not bring you the exciting feelings like other cars at the price range, again, with either an even better automatic transmission or dual clutch. Not only I wish the shifting could be faster, but I also wish that the momentum could pack more punch. Third, the steering is just terrible. Trust me when I say that the Ghibli is a sports sedan, but it does not give you the sporty steering. It is too spongy and light to my taste. And fourth, the ride quality is not really comfortable. Suspension is a bit too stiff for the car it is, and the overall body support does not give you the relaxing and luxurious feel. Given that this is a luxury sports sedan, the ride quality should have been better, especially at this price range. And lastly, the interior of the Ghibli is just a huge disappointment. It is not well crafted, like you would expect from an Italian exotic luxury car manufacturer. It does not look particularly good and generally feels cheap. If I don't see all the Maserati labels and logos, I would not believe that I'm sitting in the cockpit of a Maserati. Now, you may think that I just hate this car. Not quite. Objectively speaking, this car is not all that bad. The sound, for example, has its own very distinct tone, and I do admit that it sounds very nice and satisfying. This might be one of the best V6 sounds in the industry. Basically, the Ghibli sounds faster than it drives. Although the steering sucks, the handling of this car is the opposite. The feedback from the road is direct and awesome, and this car is honestly quite nimble in its category. Still, this car is not worth its original price of nearly 80 grand, and now this car has depreciated so much that you can find one with low mileage like this one at around 30 grand. So would it be a good buy at this point? My suggestion would still be a no. $30,000 give you a lot of options for a used car or a CPO. Even though the Ghibli would certainly seem to be a nice car to have at this price, it still doesn't seem very appealing. Given that the interior craftsmanship can be easily outclassed by the Mercedes C-Class, and driving experience is not at the level of a Porsche Boxster or a BMW Z4. However, I suspect that some people prefer the fact that this is a Maserati. And one more thing. And I found this kind of bothering and quite unfortunate is this car at this price doesn't have shifting paddles. Instead, you have those two like plastic buttons behind the wheel and they are not quite well made. They kind of shakes around and feels kind of loose. I mean, if they're firmly stowed in place, that's, uh, you know, could be a welcome feature. However, this is just a bit disappointing. So there you have it, a $30,000 2015 Maserati Ghibli that was originally priced at around $80,000. It is not a bad car to be said, and it looks actually quite nice. However, with just the mediocre interior and performance, this thing just shouldn't be priced that high to go against some other competitors with better advantages. And this is why it has depreciated so much, and this is what happened when you try to make a status symbol instead of a good car. I hope you liked today's video. If you do, please give me a like, comment, or share with your friends, and subscribe to What We Drive so you won't miss out on my future uploads. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be seeing you in the next video.